Hey everyone, today we're going to be doing a video on how to set up scan to folder on a Windows computer. Um, this is also known as scan to network folder or scan to SMB. One of the main benefits of using scan to folder or scan to SMB is the ability to be able to move large file sizes back and forth across your network and be able to get, you know, a large uh, document from the copier MFP to your computer. Typically, when using scan to email, uh, you have limitations on your attachments, five megs stuff like that. So sometimes when users are creating files that are um, or scanning documents which end up coming out to be much larger than 5 megs, then usually if you try to email that document or file you will uh, uh, run into errors and stuff like that. So again uh, this is the best way to get a um, document from the copier MFP to your computer that is going to exceed the general 5 meg size limit. We're going to need to do two things uh, for this to be successful. First and foremost, we're going to need to create a destination folder that is going to be able to receive all of the files that are coming from the copier MFP. After we create this destination folder, then secondarily, we then need to go to the copier MFP and then create the address book entry. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to start by creating the uh, destination folder. Uh, depending upon what computer you have, uh, basically you just want to get your uh, f uh, Windows Explorer open and should look something typically like this, just a general Windows uh, folder. Uh, excuse me, uh, Windows, uh, excuse me, Windows folder window. On your left side, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to click this PC. Um, if you're on Windows 7, it might be my computer or something to that effect. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open up your local disk C. Now, for ease of use and for security permissions and stuff like that, I do like to keep my destination folder directly on my C drive. Um, if I create my folder on my C drive, I always know where it is. I never have to deal with secondary permissions or parent folder permissions or anything like that. So for ease of use and for ease of manageability, um, I strongly recommend go ahead and just uh, create it directly in the C drive. However, if you need to create it in another drive or you need to you know drop it in another folder not a problem at all um, the uh, process is the same however uh, getting the file path the file path it might be a little bit long so what i'm going to do here is once i'm in the drive that i'm going to go ahead and create my uh, folder i'm going to go ahead up here and click new folder or i can right click in the window and i can go new and then folder here i'm going to go ahead and give it a name I like to keep my name super simple. Um, again, this comes down to a manageability thing. Uh, if I give it some convoluted name, um, then I sometimes forget. So I like to keep the uh, scan folder names uh, really, really simple. Um, if you need to, a, a, if you need to use a complicated name, um, if you need it. Uh, you know, named in a certain way. What I really need you guys to stay away from is, you know, using special characters um, and white space. Um, this can present a problem when um, the MFP is trying to communicate over the network, the way that the uh, domain handles special characters and the file naming and stuff like that. Um, so again, again, for ease of manageability, strongly, strongly recommended. You keep it, uh, you keep it really simple. No special characters and no white space. Once you're happy with the name, we're going to go ahead and we're going to right click on the folder we just created and we're going to go to properties. Once we're in the properties window, we're going to go over to the sharing tab. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click on share. Once we click on share, you can see uh, the standard user that I'm logged in as on this computer is going to show up. But what we want to do is we want to be able to add two other groups. This will um, open up the folders uh, security for sharing and allow um, 
allow files to move from the copier MFP directly into this folder. Again, for manageability and for ease of use, I strongly suggest using the two groups that I'm going to use. However, if security is a major concern for your destination folder, you can tailor these groups to specific users. Uh, but today's video is just going to go over generic uh, groups. So what I'm going to add, I'm going to do uh, two groups. I'm going to add two groups called everyone. And I'm going to add another group called users. I'm going to change the permission level for both of these groups from read to read write. After that's done, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go ahead and click share. Once my folder shared out, I'm going to go ahead and click done. Now, before this window gets closed, what I would want you guys to do is basically under this sort of informational thing here, kind of copy this file path here. And let's just kind of save this for later because we're going to need this in a moment. So once we have this, we know our file path to where our folder is. Now what we can do is we can now go to our Sharp MFP and go ahead and create our address book entry. And get my page up here. And again, accessing the um, accessing the uh, Sharp MFP copier is as simple as um, typing in the IP address of your Sharp MFP into a web browser window and then just hitting enter. Once you're there, it should take you to a page that looks very similar to this. Now, the machine I'm working on today is going to be an MX5141N. However, the address book entry process that I'm doing, creating the ad address book entry, is very similar across the board um, for most, if not uh, all the models out there. So um, again, the instructions I'm giving you today should be able to get you through uh, most of the models that are on the market today. Once we're on this page, we're on the left side, we're going to go ahead and click Address Book. And then down here, we're going to click Add. By default, when I create my address book entry, it's going to uh, always appear on the email tab. So what we want to make sure is we want to make sure that we've uh, moved the email tab over to this network folder tab. And you can see some of my fields will change when I choose this network folder tab. Once I have the network folder tab created, I'm going to go ahead and fill out the information on this page. Search number, not necessary. Address name, um, this is going to be a name that you want to uh, make sure that your users are going to recognize is their, uh, is their own scan to address entry. I'm going to name mine test, but again, you can name it whatever you want. Uh, you can put white space in here, it's fine. Uh, we're not going to put in an initial and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and check this box. It says register this address, uh, um, excuse me, register this address to be added to the frequent use index. The frequent use index is the very first page of the address book when the user walks up to the MFP. So it's just another ease of use type of thing instead of having the user to search through a bunch of tabs to find their name or find their specific address book entry. Clicking this little option here will uh, add this address book entry to the very very first page of the address book so this will be the first page that a user would typically see when trying to scan okay so we're good here we're going to drop down to the second half and what we're going to do is we're going to put in our network folder path and again this is going to be the item that we copied from over here so we have the network path here and then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and paste it directly in here once I'm happy with this, what I can do now is I'm going to need to enter a username and a password. And the username and the password is going to be uh, to the computer that we are scanning to. So uh, whatever computer you're scanning on, um, this will be the login to that specific computer. If you're on a domain, uh, you will need to put the domain uh, before your username. Uh, my username, yes. I cannot spell, excuse me. So from here, I would type in my username, then I would go ahead and type in my password. By checking the change password checkbox. After I'm good with this, I have a couple more options here as well. 
Uh, my file type by default is going to be PDF. If you want the default file type to be something different, you can go ahead and choose whatever you want. Um, you can choose whatever you want. Just know that when the user walks up to the machine and they do their scanning and they do their typical process to get their uh, document scanned in, they do have the opportunity at that time to change the file type as well. So setting this as default doesn't mean that this um, file type is going to be set in stone to this address book entry. Most of the time, the uh, uh, file type of PDF is completely fine. Uh, we have a couple of other options here for black and white and uh, color grayscale. And these are just compression ratios. Uh, this just, you know, it, it will affect the size of the file or the size of the scan file once it gets to the destination. After we're good with this, we're going to do one final checkbox at the bottom that says set as default used. Once this is checked, we can go ahead and hit submit. If you have more users to register, you would go ahead and hit submit and register next. You can see up here my request was successfully processed and my address book entry has been created. So if I want to go back to my address book, check my setting, you can see it's right at the bottom. And that is it. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now, if I wanted to edit my address book entry, basically I would come here, click on the address book entry that I uh, created. And then in here, what I would want to do is once again, select the network folder tab. And then under this menu, I would select the address one, which was created previously. So to Anytime you want to edit your current address book entries, this is what you want to do. You want to click on the address book entry that you created, click on the tab for the type of address that it is, and then open up this uh, little drop down menu to be able to select um, the address book entry which was created in, in, uh, pre uh, previously. And then from here, you can edit it as needed. And that's it. Once you're happy with the changes, hit submit and you are good to go.